this rivalry, it's the greatest cross-sectional rivalry in the history of college football, of course. Uh, every other rivalry is regional and within state or regional geography. It also is the most regal. It has this prestige or regality of it that even though Ohio State, Michigan doesn't have, Alabama and Auburn certainly doesn't have, it, it just has this, again, the, the term regal or royalty comes to mind about USC and Notre Dame being on the same field and, and the series and the history and just the, the schools, the institutions, and of course the football history involved. Well, do I, I get think, agreement there? Yeah, uh, you, you do get agreement. And I think the, the point that comes to mind is, you know, what's college football signature setting? What is college football signature bowl game? The Rose Bowl. And what is the Rose Bowl about? What has it been about? It's been about one team. Now, it used to be from the South. Not it wasn't necessarily the Midwest, but one team from a distant part of the country making the trek all the way across to the West Coast to play a game in the Arroyo Seco, uh, you know, in the shadows of the San Gabriel Mountains. Now, of course, when the game's in South Bend, it's the Western team making the pilgrimage to Indiana in the middle of autumn, the foliage, you know, the, the touchdown Jesus. But so it's this notion of pilgrimage, wh wh whether it's, you know, from you from Los Angeles east to South Bend or whether it's from South Bend west to L.A. in late November, there is that kind of romance which, you know, the Rose Bowl introduced into college football at a very early point in the sports history. And once that template was established and you had the iconic Rose Bowls that, you know, put Notre Dame on the map, the game against Pop Warner and Stanford, you know, being one of the first fundamentally important uh, games in, in the larger history of Notre Dame. And you have USC, you know, establishing itself as a regular Rose Bowl team in the 1930s under Howard Jones setting that foundation back in those decades in the 20s and 30s enabled each subsequent decade of trans uh, regional travel for one team or another and i think the fact that it's at, at at different times of year that usc is always playing at notre dame in october notre dame's always playing at usc in late november it just adds to this mythology because it's not it's not standardized it's a little bit different and you get kind of the specialness of this rivalry each time it's played. So that plays into what Mark's saying. It's, it's, a, it's a fascinating thing to contemplate. That last part is one part about it I don't like. I, I don't like the, I feel like it's, that's one thing as a note from a Notre Dame perspective, it's kind of tailored to USC. You know, Notre Dame has to go out West at the very end of the season and make that trip. And then mm. USC never has to come in South Bend, Indiana in late November. <laughs> you Fair know? point. Fair um, point. I think that's part of it too, but I also I also think too is if we're going to be honest, the traditions of the two schools is unlike any other in football. With all due respect to the Michigan Ohio State rivalry, it is a great rivalry. I grew up in Ohio. I mean, and I was a Notre Dame fan, and I still watch that game every year. But since World War II, Michigan's won how many championships? Like one and a half, <laughs> right? Ohio State's won a bunch, and, and they started getting more lately. But there was a long time between the end of Woody to to Jim Trestle where Ohio State was always good, but they weren't a powerhouse. And, and there was so long in this rivalry and really up until Lou Holtz left where every year, more often than not, this was a ranked game, two ranked opponents. And I mean, era Parsegian's probably got four to five championships right now, if it's not for USC. And you can go back to John McKay and look at how many he championships he'd have if it wasn't for Notre Dame. And I think that adds a lot to it as well is the fact that just for a long, I mean, Auburn and Alabama, with all due respect, have never been on the same level as programs. They just they just haven't. I just feel like that is something that makes this rivalry a little bit more unique than a lot of others, on top of a lot of things that you mentioned, Mark, with the, the, the history of it, the way it started, and why it started. I think there's a great story, you know, because all these Midwestern teams were not willing to play Notre Dame. USC and its tradition of being a cultural – groundbreaker being uh, not afraid to go recruit black players during the time when the entire sec was recruiting back black players. There was a really cool scene in Woodlawn. I don't know if you guys seen the movie Woodlawn uh, that had USC playing Alabama, I believe, and they just smacked them and USC had a bunch of black players and 
that was one of those things that kind of opened up Bear Bryant's eyes to like, I need to kind of go do this, right? It was really cool. So it's a good movie, by the way, Christian movie. Mark, I think you'd like it. I don't know you well enough to know if you'd like it. But there's just, you know, and then USC saying, hey, we'll play you, right? You don't have to deal with those anti-Catholic people in the Big Ten, which is the Western Conference at the time. We'll play you. And then just the loyalty that was created because of that. So I, I like stories like that, too. I think that adds to it as well as when you go back and say, why would Notre Dame and USC become a rival? Like South Bend, Indiana and L.A., like how does that happen? And then you go do your history and like, oh, here's why. Yeah. Because Notre Dame had to barnstorm because the teams near them weren't going to wouldn't play them, you know, for different reasons. And so USC said, hey, and when Notre Dame got good, right, USC didn't say, oh, we'll stop playing you now like Michigan did. And the other, the other thing to note about the history and the origination of this rivalry is that Howard Jones, before going to USC, he was coached at Iowa and had a lot mm -hmm. of success there. So he mm -hmm. was – Howard Jones was a Midwesterner, mm -hmm. you know, who then re, re, uh, relocated to USC, but, like, he had a, an appreciation for what it meant for Notre Dame to be in its situation in South Bend. So Howard Jones, you know, made himself an icon at USC, but – his his Iowa roots, uh, and he also brought Sam Barry, arguably the most important figure in the entire history of USC athletics. We have a, a lot of archives on him at Trojans Wire. We wrote about him in 2020 when the pandemic hit, and we didn't know if there was going to be any college football season. We wrote like a dozen articles about Sam Barry. So, yeah, if you want to study up on the origination uh, of the USC Notre Dame rivalry. Study Howard Jones, study Newt Rockney, study Sam Barry. You're going to learn a lot about it, how special this rivalry is because of its genesis.